When most Americans think of the Civil War, they think of bloody battlefields like Gettysburg and Antietam. But what about the war fought on the sea? What kinds of naval innovations were being made during this terrible war? The first task for Lincoln's naval secretary, Gideon Wells, was a straightforward but huge fill in the blank. Acquire enough vessels to make every southern inlet, port, and bay dangerous for trade. The Northern Navy immediately began building dozens of new warships and purchased hundreds of merchant ships to convert into blockaders by adding a few guns. The result was a motley assortment that ranged from old sailing ships to New York Harbor ferry boats. With a smaller fleet and fewer shipyards than the North, the Confederates counted on making the ships they had as formidable as possible. The Confederates decided to challenge the Union Navy with the latest technology, ironclads. Though iron armored ships had appeared in Europe in the 1850s, Union warships were still built of wood. The first Confederate ironclad began its career as a Union cruiser, the Merrimack, captured by the Southerners when they seized Norfolk Naval Yard in Virginia. The Confederates ripped off nearly everything above the waterline of the ship, which they renamed Virginia, and replaced it with a casement of heavy timbers covered by four inches of iron plating. Though underpowered and crude, as yet there was no match for her in Lincoln's wooden navy. The Union quickly met this challenge with the ingenuity of inventor John Erickson. Most of his ironclad, the Monitor, was underwater. All that appeared above board was a flat main deck and a circular housing carrying two guns. This tin can on a raft was the world's first rotating gun turret and it was protected by eight inches of iron. Monitor met Virginia in March 1862 at Hampton Roads, Virginia. Their three-hour engagement, often fought at point-blank range, was the world's first battle between ironclad vessels. The engagement itself was a draw, but the very existence of Virginia deterred Union Army operations in the area for some months afterwards. Suddenly, the wooden naval vessel and most of the Union fleet was obsolete. Shipyards north and south began to turn out ironclads as quickly as possible. The Civil War was also fought just under the water's surface. The Confederacy built the first submariner vessel called the H.L. Hunley. Though this submarine played a small part in the American Civil War, it played a large role in the history of naval warfare. The Hunley demonstrated both the advantages and the dangers of undersea warfare. It was the first combat submarine to sink an enemy ship, although the Hunley too was lost in the battle. On February 17, 1864, the H.L. Hunley attacked and sank the 1240 short ton screw sloop USS Housatonic on Union blockade duty in Charleston's Outer Harbor. Soon after, the Hunley sank, killing all eight of her crew. In addition to the innovation of the submarine was the use of the first torpedo. The torpedo was towed in the water behind a submarine and dragged to its target. The first torpedo, what we would now call a mine, struck a passenger steamer ship used as a Union transport called the Maple Leaf. A Confederate submarine struck the Maple Leaf as it crossed the St. Johns River near Jacksonville, Florida on April 1, 1864. Four crew members on board died during that first torpedo attack. The tale of the two navies, Union and Confederate. Though it is a history marked by tragedy, it is also a history that should be remembered for its innovation in changing technology. The U.S. Navy is stronger today in some part because of the sacrifices and ingenuity of the men in the Civil War.